What do you say, Earl? Hey, everybody. It's Luke and Earl. Earl, you say hello. Okay. If you haven't met Earl yet, Earl's our shop dog. And one of the things about being an independent record store is you can have your dog come hang out on your lap while you shoot a YouTube video. There you have it. If you're here in scraping, it's a hello to you from a cold, wintry, snowy Iowa December day. If you've never been to Iowa in December, you're missing out. It's great. It's better than Florida or California any time of the year. This place is amazing. That is false. It's cold, and Earl here, when we got out of the car, fell straight on his ass. Didn't you, Earl? I felt bad for the little guy. But he's fine now, and he's here, nice and warm and cozy, but the shoveling away they are. Right, Earl? All right, then. Moving on. Here's this episode here we're going to talk about what to do and what maybe not to do when in an independent record store or a record shop or a place that sells music memorabilia or any kind of music platform you enjoy and you want to support local, there's some things maybe you should and shouldn't do. First thing you should always do is be friendly. One of the stores, we, uh, one of our shops, Omaha Vinyl Cup Records in the old market, there's a nice red sign on the door that says, don't be a dick. We'll leave it at that. Uh, one of the things when you're in a record store and you walk in and, you, and say you kind of look around for a minute and you just go to the person that works there and say, hey, do you have any Doobie Brothers? Hey, what about any Eagles? Well, look. <laughs> Take a look. That's why they're there. Uh, in our shops, we have a new arrivals section, which is from uh, arrival to shop, newest to oldest. So the first bin you see either came out today or a few days before, all the way to the end, which is the oldest in the shop as far as new arrivals are concerned. And then it goes to our A to Z section. The best thing about that is, is you may find that one album that you didn't know we had. If you dig through, and you might find something, oh, I forgot about that. If you just ask us to do it for you, why the hell are you even here? Right? You can just hop online, click, 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 order done. They have plenty of sites for you to do that. Go there. If you come here, we'll gladly help you. However, take a look first. And if you don't find it, we have back stock. We might be able to find it for you. The other thing is, when you're looking at a, a, a record and you pull it out of the sleeve, be gentle, you know? Uh, also, don't be nervous. Take a look at it. Make sure, because most shops will identify the condition. Just take a look. Okay, look at it in the light. Ask us to put it on for you. We'll gladly play. I'm sitting right in our listening room, and you can throw it on our turntable, and we'll play it for you. Now, the thing is, we don't want you to finger fuck the record. That's the number one thing that you don't want to do in a record store is finger fuck the record. What that means is, pardon my French, but you take your paws and you grab it and you just dink around with it and it scratches everything up and blah, 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 blah. That'll piss off a record shop owner. Me, I don't really care uh, because I was that guy. I did it. We all have. If you haven't, you're lying to yourself. You've done it. You don't know until you know. Now, if you're a record shop owner and you're watching this and you're rolling your eyes, that's okay. You can do that too. I don't really care. But what I do care about is that we treat everybody kind. So they say, hey, if you don't mind, just kindly grab it by the end here and just take a look and put it back in. Uh, that's why us at our shop, we're very transparent on our grading. We write everything out so that way um, you don't have to finger fuck the record. I just like saying that word. It sounds great and it's so inappropriate. But I've watched other videos on this uh, platform and there's some weird folks out there. So this is nothing. Right, Kevin? That's absolutely Kevin agrees. I'm not showing my boobs. I mean, I could. I'm just trying to get more views. <laughs> right, Earl? Even Earl's like, what the hell is going on right now? But hey, I just tell you, uh, when you're in a record store, first thing I want you to do is have a good time. Have fun. There's a lot of great record stores out there. I have so many favorites. End of an Ear in Austin, uh, uh, Wax Tracks in Denver, as well as Twist and Shout. Uh, Noble Records, that's a great shop. Homer's in, in Nebraska. There's some amazing stores. Um, the, the thing I will tell you is in, in our store, uh, we do not have the customers always right philosophy here. Like we'll take good care of you, have great customer service. But don't come in here and act a fool. It's not gonna go well for either of us. Uh, we'd rather if you didn't come. Yeah, we want you to support local. And, and some people say, well, I'll get my money somewhere else. Okay, well, I'd rather have you take your money there than come in here and make everybody feel uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, we, we really have a, a low intimidation factor in our store. The number one thing is we want you to have a good time and spread the passion and love of music. 
not just come around yelling at you because you're not looking at our records right or whatever. That, that's not the thing. The, what we want people to do is to feel welcomed and feel um, involved. And, and Because for me, when I started collecting, I was nervous going into a record, a record shop. I, I, I was always nervous because I didn't want to touch it wrong. I didn't want to drop it. I didn't want to, you know, I, I didn't want to feel like I was ruining something or, or just, it just felt awkward sometimes. So that's why here we, we offer you a greeting, welcome you into our shop, and look around and, and, and maybe find a, a, an album that you didn't know you were looking for. So that's why I always say, don't just come in and say, hey, do you have this? Hey, do you have that? Look around. That's why we have shelves. If not, we would just have a menu at the door. Oh, I'll take the, uh, I'll take the John Denver, please. Uh, and I'll take the Pink Floyd, uh, hold the pickle. No! Come in. Paw through the records, dig through them, have a nice time, drink a cold beer, relax, have a good time. Finger fuck, you say? Oh, look at this record. This is this this is nice. Oh, did you see that right there? I think there's a scratch there. Uh, that's finger fucking a record. Hey, uh, I think you this the scratch right here on this record. Yeah, I know, sir, but you're making the scratch worse by finger fucking it. That's what I mean. Now, the proper way. Don't worry, folks. This is a highly valuable reissue of the Letterman uh, that we're using as our model today. So if you pull a record out of the sleeve, it's very easy. You can take it like that. You can nice and. Take a little look here, okay, perfect, put it back in. The, the right way to is grab it by the paper sleeve, remove as such, grab it with this hand. Do you need to raise the pinky? Take a look-see look, look, raise your pinky, smoke a cigar, and drink a little glass of wine like this, and you're good. That's it. Is it that hard? All kidding aside, seriously, just go like this. I'm good. It's not that difficult. And if you do, don't know what you're doing and you grab it like right here and you're touching the play, that's okay. It's fine. We have, we have cleaners here. We can clean it for you. Which brings me to the other point. You can get a nice vinyl style little anti-static record brush. I always recommend uh, using these before you play a record. Um, it's especially new vinyl. Gets any extra residue or anything off. Uh, the other thing that I want to say is that you, you find a lot of places, I'm not going to carry new vinyl, that's digital bullshit. Okay. My words to you, sir or ma'am, fuck off. New vinyl, there's nothing wrong with it, okay? And the thing about new vinyl is, is that it brings new people to collecting. And they have to start somewhere. I'm sorry they weren't around in 1971 when vinyl was the deal, or 1980s, you know? Why do we have to criticize a 25 year old or 20 year old or 18 or 16 or 15 year old because they want new vinyl? Who gives a shit? The thing is, they're listening to vinyl. They're listening to vinyl. So let's get over this whole new vinyl's bullshit and enjoy the fact that new people are listening to vinyl. If they're listening to it on a Crosley, who gives a shit? It's good for business because that shit's gonna get scratched up and they're gonna come back and buy it from me again. So I'm all right with it, but I won't take the return. <laughs> But no, seriously, if, if, if they get a record player, I know y'all are cringing right now, and I'm not going to say the word vinyls. Yeah, I just said it. I just said vinyls. How many people are rolling their eyes right now, Kevin? All of them. All of them. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Record player and vinyls, two words not used in a record shop. <laughs> there, put that on the list. Uh, but seriously, if they come in asking for a record player or if we have vinyls, may die inside, but I'm not going to tell you. I'll just say, yes, we do have vinyl records. <laughs> and yes, we can turn you in the right place to find a perfect turntable to meet your budget needs. And here's the deal. You might pay $10 more than that shitty turntable to get one that has a better stylus on it and talk to Skylabs or your local audiovisual shop and, and find that turntable for a low cost that has a better quality stylus that isn't going to hurt your records or affect your sound quality as bad as maybe one of the $20, $30, $40 ones. So, I'll leave you with this. It doesn't really matter if you like new or you like used. If you come into my record shop and you're a snobby record collector, 
who's going to say, do you have any jazz? And I'm going to tell you, yes, we have plenty of jazz. Well, where's your jazz section? It's the A to Z section. We have one genre here, A to Z. And there's plenty of jazz in that genre. Or if you come in and you say, hi, uh, do you have any John Denver? I say, Absolutely, we sure do. Well, where's it at? Right there. <laughs> Help yourself. Look through the new arrivals or under D. It's funny because a lot of people come into these shops and they'll say, hey, do you have this record? Yes. It's under D or it's under A or look, look, look. That's why we're here. We want you to look. <laughs> and you might find something you never heard of. And that's how we're able to offer you suggestions. If you pop up a Bob Dylan, I can say, oh, have you heard of Arlo McKinley? Or you pop up a John Prine. Oh, have you heard of Ian No? Or you pop up a Metallica. Ooh, did you see that new uh, Anthrax album that just came out? We have that box set. Uh, oh, hey, did you, did you see the, the new Macedon album? Like, we can help find things that maybe you didn't know about. Uh, but also, let's get over the new and used thing. It's, you know, it's not all digital bullshit. It, it's, it's vinyl. And that's all that really matters. So hey, thanks for tuning in. It was good seeing you. So uh, the, the, the lesson we learned today is don't finger fuck your records and look for what you're looking for rather than just asking us because we have other things to do as well. Like make sure we're finding new suggestions for you and uh, maybe I'm finding you a nice cold beer to sip while you're here. Hey, have a good day. Be safe. But most of all, don't be a dick. Love you. Bye. How you doing? Thanks for viewing. Earl, are you excited they viewed? He's so excited, he can barely hide it. Follow us on Instagram. Earl, are you on Instagram? No, but we are. Vinyl Cup Records. And you can like us on Facebook. Or go to VinylCup.com for more information. But most of all, hit subscribe.